Let's get started with a walkthrough of Adobe XD's core features. So this is what you will see when you first open Adobe XD. The first action you'll need to take is to decide what artboard size you want your project to be. Adobe helps you by offering four options. If you want to design for an iOS mobile app, you'll want to go with the iPhone X XS 11 Pro option. And you'll notice when you click on the arrow next to it, you can scroll down and choose other artboard sizes within the same category. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to design a few screens for a mobile app. So I'll choose the iPhone X option. A couple things to note about artboards. You'll notice that there's this text above the artboard that says iPhone X slash XS slash 11 Pro dash one. You'll definitely want to get into the habit of renaming your artboards because this becomes the file name when you export these screens later. And also it'll just help you keep you sane and organized throughout your project, especially when you get into prototyping. Let's rename this app underscore welcome screen. And things you'll notice here, if you wanted to move the artboard, you could just click on that text or you could click anywhere on the artboard. But if you start to have a bunch of elements that might be a little bit difficult, so the easiest way is to just click the text and move it around that way. If you wanted to resize the artboard, you could click and drag on any of the corners or you could also go over here and change it by the width and the height. So maybe you know a specific size of like 800 by 1000 pixels. You can do it that way. But let's undo all of that. You notice on the top here, there's this little cloud icon. That means that it's going to save this document to the cloud. Now I don't actually wanna do that. So I'm gonna double click Untitled One and I'm going to save my document on the desktop. So I'm going to title it flower underscore app, choose my computer and you can choose anywhere you want. I'm gonna do the desktop for now, save. And now that cloud icon has disappeared. So let me quickly show you how to create other artboards. There's a few ways to do it. One is you could use the artboard tool over here. You click it and all these options are gonna show up on the right and then you could just click anywhere on the canvas and it's gonna create another artboard the same size. And you could just keep doing that. Another way is you could just click on an artboard and press option and drag and it'll create a duplicate of that artboard. As you'll see, every time you create a new artboard, the file name's gonna be dash one, dash two, dash three, and so on, which again is why I mentioned you'll want to name those as you go. To delete an artboard, you can just click on it, press the delete key, or you could click, right click, and press delete. You could also highlight and delete. A couple of simple ways. So I'll quickly run through the tools that you see on the user interface here. So this is the selection tool. And if you hover over each of these, you'll see letters afterwards and that's the keyboard shortcut. So that's the selection tool. This is the rectangle tool which you can use to make rectangles, squares, all kinds of shapes. Underneath is the circle or ellipse tool. There's a triangle tool and also a line tool. Uh, a thing to note about this, if you want to create a straight line, just click and drag and press shift and it'll lock it into place. There's a pen tool where you can create some simple shapes. Text tool, you can type in any text. Again, we already talked about the artboard option and then zoom if you wanted to zoom into a particular spot. So if you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator, a lot of these options will be very familiar to you. Distribute and align options, and these to basically create shapes by adding or subtracting uh, two different shapes. This is component, which is something that's a little bit more advanced and we'll get into later. Here you can adjust the 
width and height, pixel dimension, uh, the X and Y location. If you wanted to rotate something or reflect it on a vertical or horizontal axis. Responsive resize, which, will, which you may use when you start designing across different platforms and you want to create a responsive design. And this is the appearance section where you can adjust and start really getting into the nitty gritty of design. So for example, let's say we wanted to make this shape a different color. We would choose fill. You can adjust the color here. You can adjust transparency with this slider. If you knew the hex color, you could type that in or RGB, HSB. You could use the eyedropper to sample colors if you had other colors on your artboard. By default, every shape is gonna have a border, so if you don't like that, you can unclick it, or maybe you want to add, an, or maybe you do wanna add a border, let's say a pink border, something like that. You can adjust the size. If you wanted to do dashes with a little bit of a gap, some options like as if you were in Illustrator may have having an inner stroke, an outer stroke, a center stroke, different types of cap options, which would be helpful when you create a line. A red line, let's make it thicker so it's easier to see. And you can see how the cap options change that. So let's get rid of that border. There's also shadows. You can actually have different color shadows if you want. By default, it's gonna be black at 16%, but you could adjust this however you want. Maybe you want like 50%, you want like a really harsh shadow. Just to dramatize it so you can really see, like, let's do that. You can see how you have a lot more customization options for shadows. B is for blur, so right now it's a really harsh shadow, but maybe we want it to blend more. So the higher the number is, 10, the more blur that there will be. Let's go even higher, 25, and you can see it really starts to fade. Also an option for black background blur. So let's bring this shape to the front and use that option. So you can see how you can start to create some really cool effects and use these to help design some amazing screens for an app or landing page or whatever your project is. You can adjust the amount of the blur, the brightness, whether it's going, you know, it's more black or more white, also the transparency as well. So that was a quick overview of the interface. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more. Also leave a comment below and let me know what are you struggling with in Adobe XD?